Here's another example from our question set. Can these lone pairs on the nitrogen be pushed into this double bond in some fashion to give me a legitimate resonance contributor? Well, I want you to imagine doing that. I hope you can see that if we attempted that, we would form a carbon-nitrogen double bond. As we used with the earlier example involving the oxygen in the ring, do you see any problems with that molecule? Well, yeah, you should notice that this carbon right in the middle now has five bonds or 10 electrons around it. Thus, this is not a legitimate movement of electrons, and this is not a resonance contributor. Thus, these lone pairs are too far removed from the double bond in order to have them participate in resonance. We now move on to another subject, identifying the greatest resonance contributors. You see, as it turns out, when a compound has multiple possible resonance structures that are all legitimate, the greatest resonance contributor is the resonance structure that's the most stable. Now what that means is that in real life, the actual compound will look more like the resonance structure that's the greatest resonance contributor than any of the other resonance structures that are less stable. So that begs the question, how in the world do you determine which of multiple resonance structures is the most stable? The answer is this. Resonance structure stabilities are increased by the following rules. One, making sure that all atoms have a complete octet. Here's an example resonance structure. The one on the left and the one on the right both have a positive charge in them. However, in the one on the left, the carbon here only has six electrons around it. Whereas the one on the right, it has all eight. The oxygen has eight electrons around it in both examples. Which of these two is the most stable resonance contributor? The one on the right. And the reason is because all atoms in it have full octets. Thus, in reality, this molecule will look more like the resonance contributor at right than it will like the one on the left. Number two, put negative charges on the most electronegative atoms. Here's an example. I've got a resonance contributor in which I've got a negative charge on a carbon. You can imagine that negative charge thrusting down here, closing like a door to form a carbon-carbon double bond and pushing these pi electrons up onto the oxygen to give me a negative charge on the oxygen. These are both completely legitimate and participating resonance contributors of this molecule. Which one is more stable and hence the greater resonance contributor? Well, you'll notice that in both examples, all of the atoms have full octets. Thus, I don't have to worry about rule number one. However, in the example on the right, I have the negative charge on the more electronegative atom, the oxygen, whereas in the example to the left, I've got it on a carbon. Thus, the example on the right is the more stable example. And hence, the actual molecule that these two resonance contributors represent will look more like the molecule on the right and a little bit less like the molecule on the left in real life. And three, having no charge on any atom. If I have a molecule like the one shown here, where there are no charges anywhere and everything has a full octet, I could imagine creating a resonance contributor in which these pi electrons pushed up onto the oxygen, giving it a negative charge, and these pi electrons swung like a door on a hinge to form a carbon-carbon double bond and giving me a positive charge on this carbon, as shown here. These are both completely legitimate resonance contributors. Which of these two is the more stable and hence the greater resonance contributor? It's of course going to be the one on the left. The reason is because every single atom has a full octet and there are no charges anywhere. So let's see if we have a mastery of this concept by looking at a chapter problem. I want you to draw resonance contributors for each of the following compounds and then rank the contributors in order of decreasing contribution. In other words, decreasing stability. Now I'm going to give you the answers to these momentarily. But before going on, if you wish, you can pause the video and attempt to do them on your own. Here's the first one. Let's see if we can draw resonance contributors. This is a positive charge in a carbon, which means that, that is a carbon that only has six electrons around it. As you can imagine, these pi electrons can swing like a door on a hinge over closing to form a carbon-carbon double bond and leaving me with a positive charge on the internal carbon here. Which of these two structures is the greatest resonance contributor? Both of them have charges, and neither of them has a scenario in which everything can have a full octet. So how do I decide? I decide, of course, based on stability. 
The resonance contributor on the left has a tertiary carbocation, while the resonance contributor on the right has a secondary. Tertiary is more stable than secondary, hence the structure at the left is more stable and will be the greater resonance contributor. Let's take a look now at this example. You can imagine these pi electrons shared in the carbon-oxygen double bond pushing up onto the oxygen. If that happened, it would give me this resonance structure where the oxygen has a negative charge and the carbon who just lost electrons has a positive charge. You can then imagine these pi electrons next door swinging like a door on a hinge to close and form a carbon-carbon double bond. When they do so, it neutralizes the positive charge at the center and leaves me with a positive charge at the carbon who just lost electrons, giving me this resonance contributor. Which of all of these three structures is the most stable? As you'll note, the leftmost example is one in which every single atom has a full octet and there are no charges. Hence, it is the stablest and greatest resonance contributor. In reality, the actual molecule will drift back and forth between all three of these, but it will spend the majority of its time looking closest to this one. Here's another example. If I have a molecule that has a charge, a charge that I can't get rid of, I could imagine these pi electrons being shared between this carbon-oxygen double bond pushing up onto the oxygen to give me this structure. This carbon in the middle now has a positive charge and only six electrons around it. I can next imagine the lone pairs on this adjacent carbon thrusting down here to close that, forming a carbon-carbon double bond, giving me this resonance contributor. Now you'll note that in all of these examples, there's no way I can completely get rid of the negative charge. So which example is the stablest and hence the greatest resonance contributor? It's going to be the one that has the negative charge on the most electronegative atom, which is oxygen. Thus, the one here on the right is the greatest resonance contributor and the one that will most closely resemble the actual molecule itself. And now a final example. I once again have a molecule that is charged and there's nothing I can do to get rid of the charge. I can imagine, however, the pi electrons being shared by this carbon and oxygen in this double bond pushing up onto that oxygen. If I do that, I end up with this intermediate carbocation that only has six electrons around it. At this point, I could imagine the lone pairs on this nitrogen pushing down here, closing to form a nitrogen-carbon double bond, and giving me this resonance contributor. Which of these three things is the stablest? You'll note that the example in the middle has a carbon that only has six electrons around it, not a full octet. Thus, that is going to be the least stable. Over here, on the leftmost example, I've got a positive charge on the oxygen. And on the rightmost example, I've got a positive charge on the nitrogen. Which of those elements can better handle a positive charge? Well, the nitrogen is less electronegative. Thus, it can more easily handle a positive charge. So the rightmost resonance contributor here is the one that is the stablest.